In the past few years, society has done a wonderful job with equality and equity and fairness in the um, adult identity of the LGBTQ community. But adults come from kids. And when a child finds out their identity, being gay or lesbian or transgender or any orientation that is not the normal, they don't feel safe in many environments because of the conflicts that they find from their parents or church groups or other groups that society has made being identified different a sin or a bad thing. Hi, I'm Cindy Cerndorf, and I am the, the executive director of the Cerndorf Foundation. And also, I'm the creator of the Rainbow Arts Project. Our goal with our project is to give kids a safe place to study about their identities. And what I have done is brought together the senior world with the, with the kids and sharing stories and journeys about their coming out so that they have a chance to dialogue one-on-one -on -one with these seniors and understand that they're not alone, which is a very scary place to be in today's world. I'm really excited that you hear the voices and see the clips of the many friends and advocates of the Rainbow Arts Project who are gonna share their journeys and also who's going to be able to identify kids exactly how they're not alone to this world. It is their voice that's giving our goal a push into schools and into the communities that drive our ambition of mentorship to these students and to these kids of all ages. But we need your help. Our kids really need your help. And I ask you watch this and make a decision that we're going to support the arts and our identities and bring safe places back to our schools and to our communities for all people and be fair and have trust in what we're doing again and be safe. Thanks for watching. And a lot of seniors have put in a lot of energy learning wonderful things, and they will share them. Mm -hmm. well, I think that the younger people that I know that are getting involved with and getting to know seniors in all the aspects of it are getting a world of knowledge that they can't get in a book, they can't get from their parents. It's just, it's just an incredible, we're an incredible wealth of knowledge. Yeah. And there's so much that we can share. I've heard, though, and I think Portland is incredibly, amazingly open for lesbians right. and gays and LGBT, the whole kismet mm -hmm. queer. Yeah. Really covers it great. And I'm just, um, considering that we're so conventional in Portland, I think it's really a gift, an asset mm -hmm. to us to be able to be this open. So how can we get the feeling that you're feeling in, in our wonderful Q Center into the schools? What's your suggestion? Well, the first thing is communication, communication, communication. You've got to talk about it. You have to find a safe place to talk about it. Do you feel safe in our community? 
Uh, do I feel safe? Um, I feel safe in my mind. I don't feel safe out there. Uh, I don't think there's a day I feel safe out there because uh, if I dress too flashy, I'm usually uh, there's some verbal attack. Um, I just uh, you just have to be cautious unless you're really looking for trouble. One of the fundamental challenges in the schools is to take the conversation farther than the LGBT students in their safe space and the GSAs and take it out into the school community as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a formidable challenge, but I think that's one of the places that we have to go because we have to educate. And uh, it's, we can educate ourselves, but the people that really need to be educated are the people who are outside of those circles. <clears throat> what I'd like to say to the students, if they're in a sexual identity minority, is the way you are is okay. <clears throat> you don't have to be one way or the other. Um, and I've certainly spoken to some young people who still are struggling with that. that they, they have an image of what it means to be gay or to be trans. <clears throat> and they feel like they have to be that way, and they aren't that way. <clears throat> and I think the way to do that in the schools is to speak to your second question, is have more people there who are of a diverse personality. Whatever your personality is, is okay. You don't have to have somebody else's personality. Just be yourself, mm -hmm. and it will be okay. And that's a message that can be very difficult to get through. Mm. But that's mentoring, I think, is the strong, strong way to do it, mm -hmm. to just be there. Mm -hmm. As for safety, the subject came up earlier. Um, at least in Portland uh, and this part of Oregon, I have had no problems with safety. Now I don't go out of my way to um, expose myself to potential trouble, but uh, in the 12 years of transition and however many years of being gay in the community, I have not had a problem uh, in Oregon. It's just been really incredible and wonderful. We may be the only light in, that these kids see, you know. Uh, it's very important for us to tell them it's okay to be different, but it's also good to be safe. So find someone you can trust. Find someone who has your best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. Do you finally feel safe? I feel safe in this. Yes, I feel safe. Do you feel safe, Jessica? I've felt safe for a long time, but I was really lucky. I grew up in a large metropolitan area, a lot of gay friends, a lot of gay older people and younger people in my life. And um, I'm a lucky one. What are your thoughts if you were going to have your future year, you talk back to the present you, what would be your thoughts that you would like to tell these kids right now? Wow, you've got to be just true to who you are, uh, no matter what the obstacles. Uh, trans people are the most resilient people that I've ever known in my life, that they, they sacrifice so much uh, to be their true authentic self. Uh, and I think in the future, if we look way out in the future, I think people are going to think that that's sense, wow, I, because that's not going to be the case, I don't think, 50 or 60 years out. But, but now, though, uh, when you're transgender and you tell your family and friends that this is who I am, there's a good chance you could lose everybody. You could lose everything, job, house, you name it, place to live. It's just everything. So I think maybe they'll look back and think this is kind of a quaint thing to be talking about at this time, but, but it's a very real thing, actually, that, that we deal with. It's, it's very real, and, and the fact is that uh, trans people face probably the most harsh discrimination in this country. Uh, a high percentage of homeless youth are trans. 
Mm -hmm. um, they can't find jobs. They can't go to school because their IDs are wrong and they can't get them fixed. They get kicked out of their houses. Uh, there's a high suicide rate. Um, and what I would tell the young people of today looking back is being true to yourself uh, and walking through the hardship is ultimately going to be more rewarding mm -hmm. than hiding as I did. Yes. Yes. It's just really all about being who you are and that's okay. You know, there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that. But you're, I, yes, I mean, it's a very tough, hard journey, but you have to do it. I started Hormones in 1999, uh, was six months into it, and all of a sudden one day in the mirror, I looked there, and there was this feminine face looking back at me. And I mean, it just gets, still gives me chill bites because it was the first time I ever really saw myself. Yeah. <laughs> And it was like, oh my gosh, this, that, that is exactly who I am. Oh my gosh, yes, I'm finally seeing that. I was actually the person I was always meant to be. You know, I may be really struggling that's, right now. <laughs> that's exactly it. That inner knowledge that I am being the person I was meant yes, to be, yes. that brings so much joy. Yeah. The kids have to know that there are lots of people out there like them, if they can search them out, if they can find mentors, if there can be more of us who put ourselves out there. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we have to do as adults, is put ourselves out there and mm -hmm. offer help. And kids, uh, we, can't, we can't let them fall through the cracks. I know that's a cliche, but we can't let them just wither away and mm -hmm. LGBTQ, youth are at risk for so many things, a laundry list of, of, uh, of things, uh, and I can't remember what they are. Suicide, <laughs> suicide, suicide, uh, suicide uh, brushes violence. with the law, violence, bullying at school, I mean... Incarceration. Right. Uh, homelessness, yourself. homelessness and houselessness. Yeah, I worry a lot about safety and suicide with young kids. And it's, it's not just urban areas, I mean rural areas, it's in urban areas also. It's, um, it's a huge problem. And um, I, I think uh, one of the things that my message to me would have been, too bad I wasn't a lesbian sooner. Just like you're saying, you wish you'd been trans sooner. I wish that I had, I had really found my identity at an earlier age and I'm, I'm sort of, um, I admire and I'm jealous of young people when they do that at an earlier age than I did. But I also realize that there's a lot of risk and, and uh, uncertainty about that. And I worry, I worry for kids. I think we need more safe places. What would you like to contribute to help kids find their identity, find their true self? Well, uh, I would like to just show them. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how else to do it except be myself. You know, here I am, a trans woman of 64 years old, and uh, I'm I'm here, and I'm queer, and I'm here for you. Do you think there is a bridge from being a senior to younger kids that's vital? Yes, there has to be. I mean. Uh, it's up to us to help build that bridge, so. It's all about love. It's all about showing yourself and using your voice.